hello beloved this is philip pollard major welcome you to this youtube channel i'm sure this video you're about to watch will be a blessing to you so kindly like comment and please subscribe to this channel for more edifying videos like this be blessed by this video when god comes to man most times it is the mission that he changes the discipline that means you do not have to wait until you understand your assignment to begin to invest in skill, invest in discipline, invest in strategic knowledge. It will not be a waste even when you eventually find your place. Learning obedience will be useful. Whether you have found your assignment or not, learning diligence will be useful. Whether you have found your assignment or not, learning time management, all of these things that make men efficient will not be thrown away just because God called you. This is very important. That means here up front, I will teach you that even if you have not found your place in life and destiny in terms of purpose, you can begin to build the skills of a fisherman because when Jesus calls you, you will still be a fisher. It's only that you will now become of men. Are we together now? Yes. Imagine if he came and met these guys folding their arms and he said, why are you people sitting idle? And he said, well, we're not doing anything. We're waiting for the day we'll be called. There's some prophetic word that one day will be apostles. Jesus would not have appointed them. The only thing they did not have was the mission. But the discipline was already there. Are we together? They began to build that culture of discipline already. That skill of efficiency already. It was easy for him to call them and switch them to their mission. Because whether you are a fisher of fish or a fisher of men, one thing will remain, you will be a fisher. Are we together? This is very powerful. Number two, Jesus said, come, follow me. The first instruction to becoming a fisher of men, he was speaking to people who were already skilled. And yet he said, come, then he said, follow me. You would think he would call them and say, leave being fishers of fish and become immediately the fisher of men. There are consequences if you skip this step in your becoming a fisher of men. No matter how professional you are, no matter how successful you are, one thing is for sure, when God calls you, you start afresh. This is for sure. Your skill remains, but he will not just switch you immediately from your life or whatever you were doing. The business of men is very delicate and it needs training. He called these people and he said, follow me. You will need a season of following. In other words, there are patterns you will need to learn. You will need to watch me do it. Watch my approach to the lost. Watch my approach. They followed him to the house of Zacchaeus. They came and met him at the well with the woman. Remember the woman at the well? They, they saw different templates. He was training them to be fishers of men. For every believer who desires to answer that mandate of being a fisher, the first assignment is not to go to the field. The first assignment is to follow. To follow and learn. Learn what makes for efficiency as far as winning the lost is concerned. Now listen very carefully. I wrote something here. That the first requirement in becoming an effective fisher of men is your training. Not the fishing. Not evangelism. The first requirement in becoming a fisher of men is your training not the fishing itself or in our case now not the evangelism it's amazing how many people want to evangelize they want to be part of the programs that lead to winning the lost but they will not allow themselves to be trained you are going to be learning that your life will be laced with a lot of inefficiency and pain and defeat and regret even though your intention is sincere if you do not follow and you suddenly emerge yourself into a fisher of men you will cause a lot of casualty at the sea are we together jesus trained them he allowed them to watch his approach in dealing with men listen to me 
Being a fisher of, man, of men is being called into the business of men. These guys were business people. They were not just called into the business of products and services. They were called into the business of men. And they needed hands-on training by following Jesus, by making observations. This is very important. I took out time to make a little study. And in that study, I tried to find out the training of a fisherman. What does it take for a man to be a fisherman? And I'm going to be drawing forth lessons from that training because Jesus said that we will still be fishers. It's only that we'll be fishers of men. And I took time to observe how a fisherman is trained. What are the factors that fishermen need to understand to be effective at fishing? Because they would be the same principles that will be used for effective witness, especially soul winning. You'll be learning why our evangelism and our soul winning campaigns and pursuits within the body of Christ is largely ineffective. Like I've told you, there's now, as we know, statistically speaking, above 8 billion people upon the earth, and we have just a little shy of, say, 2.6 to 2.8 professing Christians across the globe. It's a very uncomfortable truth, but we have to understand and agree that something is wrong with the inefficiency of our witness, especially our soul winning. We have programs and conferences organized globally every year, every week, every day. There are many mission agencies across the globe doing, you know, you know, great things at different levels. But why is it that in spite of many churches, many conferences, many men and women of God, many church programs, it looks to me and statistically proven that there does not seem to be constructive advancement in terms of the lost who come to the fold. Something is wrong. And we will use today's teaching to examine what is wrong. The training of a fisherman. The training of a fisherman is also the training of a soul winner. There are many things that soul winners, believers who desire to be part of winning the lost, regardless your zeal, there are things we can learn from the training of a fisherman. And I want to run through a list with you, hoping and praying that as you listen, God will sharpen you, reposition you to become a very effective soul winner. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. So I wrote something here before we discuss that there are fishing principles that can help the believer become an effective soul winner. We are going to be learning what makes a fisherman an effective fisherman. And from the mandate of Jesus, draw forth lessons from there that can make us become effective witnesses, effective fishers of men. Are you ready now? Number one. The first thing we have to learn in the training of a fisherman is that you need to understand the sea. You need to understand the sea. That is where you find fish. You don't find fish in the air. You don't find fish just on the ground. You don't find fish on a tree. If you want to be a fisherman, the first thing you have to understand is the sea. That is where you find fish. Are we learning now? Every fisherman knows that until you are trained to understand the dynamics of navigating the sea, you will never be able to catch fish. I do not know any professional fisherman who does not understand the dynamics of the sea. And the sea is a very complicated place. Because there is a skill to walking or living in the sea. Walking, W-A-O-R-K-I-N-G. Walking in the sea. There is a skill. If you do not know it, you can die at sea. How many of you know that many people have died at the sea? Because there are times that the sea can be calm, almost noiseless. But there are times that the sea can be boisterous. Many fishermen, like many believers, do not know that the sea 
is where you find fish. But if you do not understand the sea and how to navigate your way, that mission can become a mission impossible that kills you right at sea. And unfortunately, many, many believers in the name of evangelism have died at the very place where they are supposed to save sinners. The sea for a believer represents the entire globe. Anywhere men can be found is likened to anywhere fish can be found. When you talk about the sea in our context as believers, we are talking about the entire globe. Now listen very carefully. We are fishers of men and this is a training course. There's no fisherman, watch this, that finds himself roaming around, jumping and shouting around the sea. No. The fishermen observe the weather. Are we together? They observe so many things. And even when the sea becomes boisterous like you'll be learning, the skill that you deploy when the, fish, the sea is calm is not the same skill you deploy when the, skill, the, fi, the sea is boisterous. Are you following me now? Very important. The first lesson in the training of a fisherman that can be brought to the training of a soul winner is you must understand the sea. Please look at me. My goodness. This world you see is the world of men. And like the sea, it is a very complicated space. Are we together? If you want to save sinners and you do not understand the world you have found yourself in, you will get into the middle of things that you may never come out of. Every soul winner must be trained to understand the world wherein you will be going to save souls in. There are places across the earth that are harsh and messless like the boisterous nature. There are places, I hope you know, that the fish in the sea don't stay at the same place. There are some of them, you can find them. In fact, just looking at the sea, you can see them popping up. But there are others who are deep down the sea. Many believers who want to be effective soul winners have never taken time to, they are not even interested in studying the cosmos, the world of men. And so we carry a lot of blind zeal in the name of evangelism, especially as touching our modern day world. There are many, many fishermen who have gone to sea and never returned back home. Like many people who went and suffered several casualties because they were not trained to understand that being a fisherman like a soul winner, lesson number one is you must study the sea. The world that we live in is not a world of compassion. The world that we live in is not a world of fairness. The world that we live in it's not a world with men alone. There are spirits cohabiting with men. You need to understand the world wherein that's where sinners are. The world that you are living in, that you are going to evangelize and win souls, is under the influence of this spirit called Satan. He has manipulated that sea with a, a way of thinking, a way of behavior. He's called the God of this world and that he's blinded the minds of the people. If the believer does not understand the cosmos, your witness will be very ineffective. If you're following me, shout amen. amen. So like the sea, the sea for the believer and for the soul winner represents everywhere men can be found. Abuja, Lagos, the city center, your village, everywhere men can be found, qualifies to be called the sea. Number two, the second training for a fisherman that is applicable for a soul winner. I hope you are learning already. If you do not know this, you will not truly be a fisher of men. You need to know the various kinds of fish there are at sea. Aha, uh -huh. this is a very important one. You need to have this at the back of your mind that there are various kinds of fish in the sea. All fish are not the same. That tells you immediately that your strategy will not be the same. All fish are not the same. Every fisherman knows that there are a multitude of fish or fishes as we say in the sea. 
according to National Geographic, I did a little study. It says there are about 32,000 living species of fish on the earth. Let me repeat that again for your knowledge. There are about 32,000 living species aside from the ones that are extinct. These are the various kinds of fish that are found across various seas on earth. You see why you need training? Because there are many soul winners. The first fish you were trying to catch was a whale and it swallowed you. Because just because it's a sea does not mean you go and catch everything there. Are we learning now? I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified Every fisherman, like every soul winner, must know that biologically all men are the same. But spiritually, just like the variety of fish we have, I'm not an agriculturist, but I know there are very many kinds of fish. Even that sea you see is divided into fresh water, salt water. They, they are not the same. The way you catch some salmon or tuna is not the same way you catch a shark. There are vicious sea creatures you must be aware of so that you don't stand there with a small boat and a net as a fisherman and not return again. Are you learning tonight? Fishers of men. 32,000 living species of fish. That means different species of fish require different techniques. The way Jesus approached the woman at the well was not the same way he approached Zacchaeus. Are you seeing that now? There is wisdom that must be understood and deployed by every soul winner. There are many soul winners that have gotten into trouble because they did not know that this sea you are seeing called the earth has various kinds of fish. There are people who blindly went to preach with fanatism without help. They are in prisons today. And it's not just, I'm not talking of persecution or martyrdom. I'm talking of standing in a sea and not knowing the kind of fish that will come out. Every fisherman in training knows that you must know the various kinds of fish. Look up. Let me tell you the various kinds of fish that talk about the variety of unsaved people. There are people Jesus said are already close to the kingdom. That means all it takes, they are, they are overripe for a harvest. Are we together? Already, by their personality and their disposition, they are, they are just one step into the kingdom. Morally right. Nice people. Very thoughtful. Very philosophical. By reason of their philosophical stretch, they have already gleaned attributes that make them responsible people. It's easy to receive the gospel. No argument. You bring Jesus, they embrace it another kind of fish there are fish that you have to dig the sea the ground to bring them out because of how how deep they have gone are we together there are people as soon as you see them and say look i want to tell you about jesus they say sit down where was jesus born i will tell you the date at the end of it you end up with debates and arguments and you see how much of scripture you don't know they leave you feeling bad and they say go and do your homework before you come and talk to me the next time the problem is not the sea the problem is not the fish the problem is that the fisherman was not trained there are various kinds of fish there are fishes that bite and kill did you hear what i said they bite anything including other fish you will meet them eating other fish before your arrival are we learning when you are dealing with a fish that eats other fishes you have to be careful 
ask any fisherman that you came and met the fish before your arrival you met it eating have you seen most of you watch Nas national geographic these great whales they just open their mouth and allow these tiny fishes to just swim inside and they close it and you want to use a hook to get that kind of fish a fish that is used to killing a fish that does not mind spilling blood no there is an intelligence you need is someone learning now the way you win a naive, innocent person is not the way you win a cultist who can kill. At every point in his life, there are weapons with him. You need to be careful. There is a skill. Fishers of men. Are we learning? Hmm. There are people who out of zeal, they entered one chance, not by mistake, by themselves. Because they felt they wanted to talk to a group of six people by themselves with wisdom. And while they were speaking, they noticed nobody was responding, but the car was moving. <laughs> Until they got to a point where they said, come out. And they found themselves in a forest somewhere. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. We blame everything on the mission God gave us, not knowing that there is a training for fishermen. If the fish swallows you, most likely you are Jonah. If the fish swallows you, most likely you are not a fisherman. If he tells you to walk on, on the sea, even if you are sinking, he will hold you. Because it's his word that made you come. So sometimes we need to stop blaming God for the inefficiencies that have been experienced at the mission field. It was a product of zeal without training. There are people who have died as genuine Matthias. Honor to them. But there are people who have died the death of fools and the death of amateurs. God is teaching your fingers, your hands to war and your fingers to fight. That at the sea, just like the earth, the mission is, the field is wide. The is plentiful and there are a variety of fish. Are we together? If you're following, say amen. amen. The second thing every fisherman knows and every witness and every soul winner must know is that there are a variety of fishes in every sea. Number three. The third thing we learn from the training of a fisherman that applies to a soul winner in training is that there are various techniques for catching fish when it has to do with the business of fishing like it has to do with the business of soul winning the mission is the same the message is the same but there are various techniques and you know why by now because there are various kinds of fish the third thing i need you to learn i hope you are learning that there are various techniques for catching fish for instance, there's what they call the bait and the hook. That you tie a bait to a hook. You've seen fishermen do that? Usually that goes for a small fish that you can even lift by yourself. And so they put worms or they put whatever, a bait in a hook. And then they just throw it at sea or at a small pond or a river. And they wait patiently. And they usually can know when a fish has taken it because it bites the, the bait together with the hook and then they wind it backwards and pull it up and put it into a basket many of you have tried that many of you probably fish that way another strategy is to cast your net the use of nets is called casting that you can cast nets and even that as i study have various skills to do it but i will save that for another day at least these two tell you that to catch fish does not just require one approach alone. This is very powerful. There is the bait and the hook and there is the casting using a net. And even that one happens in many ways. Are we learning? Write this down. Under point three, not everybody will be saved on a crusade ground. Not everybody will be saved by a preacher, but everybody should be saved. 
Not everybody will be saved on a crusade ground. Not everybody will be saved by a preacher. There are many skills, many techniques, and many strategies. This is very powerful. It's a very important training that any fisherman knows that depending on what kind of fish, depending on what location of the sea, there are various techniques that you can deploy to catch the fish. Now listen carefully. Still on point three. I wrote something here and I wanted to listen. Every God-ordained ministry in the body is sent by God to a particular group of men. Every God-ordained ministry in the body of Christ is sent by God, anointed by God to fish a particular group of men. Boat hooks and nets are ways of catching fish. The hook must never downplay the net and the net must never downplay the hook. They are both methods of catching fish. Are we learning now? You must understand that for this evangelical work, these missions, these global missions, this soul winning work, it is not the method you know that is the only method. There are a variety of methods. God ordained methods. Please look up. How many of you know a group called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship? Let me see your hands. Full Gospel, you've heard about them, even if you're not part of them. You've heard about them. I've had the honor of preaching there. I preached at their world conference last year. Phenomenal people, intelligent people. It's a, it's a collection of literally, without exaggeration, some of the best business minds across the globe. This has lasted for a very long time. It was an honor that I had to speak to them last year. Phenomenally intelligent people, literally across every nation. Now, do you know that there are certain people on account of their financial status and on account of the things that happen around their life, they will never have the opportunity to hear a preacher on a crusade ground because their lifestyle and where God has lifted them will not even allow them to know that there is such a thing. So God raised the full gospel businessmen's fellowship for instance. Now if Joshua Selman as a man of God, having the privilege to shout on a crusade ground, down place the ministry of the full gospel businessmen there is literally a demography of wealthy people that will never be saved are we together number two how many of you know about any children ministry any children ministry christian children ministry cem uh what they call them now anyone at all for children how many of you know that there are many adults who frustrate that ministry because they feel what do children, the children don't need to learn anything. But how many of you know that every armed robber was once a child? Every prostitute was once a child. Every destroyer of destiny was once a child. And God knowing that it's important to train up a child in the way he should go and that not many parents know God enough to do justice to the destinies of the children. He placed a burden upon certain people to minister to the children and yet those ministries in many places are neglected ignored and looked at as less of a ministry to apostolic ministries like this the hook must respect the net they are all tools designed to catch fish they are only catching various kinds of fish there is a net that is too wide to catch tiny fish. The fish will swim out of it gladly. The fish will not even recognize that there is a net there because the net is too big for that fish. Are we together now? Uh, so you will find that fisherman in a children's class teaching and jumping like a child and you are wondering what is this foolish adult doing? Remember, there are tiny fish that your big net cannot catch. Yet, they need to be caught. Are we learning? So the man or the woman, we had one of our fathers, I uh, think I'm um, what year now, school of ministry, 
I think he was maybe now the second or third oldest person who had been part of the school of ministry students. Maybe he's even following now. Great man. He was then in his 60s, approaching 70s. Or was it up to 70, I think? And this man could be so playful. I mean, he could just jump. And sometimes I remember then wondering, I said, can you imagine? As old as this man is, he has remained youthful at heart because these are the kinds of fishermen that were anointed. How many of you know it takes the anointing to still remain a child at 70? Because you are weak and tired and angry at life at 70. It takes the anointing to still make you have the zeal of a child. Fishermen. If we dedicate one koinonia service for children now, some of you will be sleeping even before praise and worship. So what is this children's thing now? Yet, that may be the meeting that saves your child. I'm just teaching you in this training that every fisherman, like every soul winner, if you do not understand a strategy, observe carefully and ask God, don't condemn. When you see Jesus with the woman at the well, don't conclude, what is Jesus doing at the well? It is a strategy for her salvation. When you see Jesus with a madman in Gadara, don't conclude, what is he doing with demon spirits? Watch to see what happens to that madman when he comes back to his right mind. Are we together now? Our witness is ineffective because through religion and the traditions of men, we have defined a path based on our religiosity and we are forcing and blackmailing people to go through that mold and that anybody I see with a hook if I'm holding a net or anybody I see with a net if I'm holding a hook is not a fisherman. You may be wrong. There are various kinds of fishes and there are various techniques for catching them. So when you see God anoint somebody with a unique ability just for prosperous people, don't condemn. There are souls in the business world that God has given that person a mandate to reach. If it is not your assignment, respect it and stay in your call, but don't condemn. You are losing fish. We have been losing fish to the religiosity of men. If you see a woman called into women ministry, don't say what is these women and all these their problem. They will soon start gossiping about their husbands. That is not your concern. There are women who will never be saved till a woman talks to them. There are women who the, the nature of their pain will require another woman like them to say, I know what we are going through. Are we together now? As anointed as God has made me by his grace, there are certain elderly people who will only respond to Baba Deboe's altar call. I can preach there and they are impressed, hitting their children and say, be like this man, don't be stubborn, yet they are not saved. They are hearing, even if I'm crying on stage. But Baba will come out and speak in 30 minutes and make an altar call and the woman will stand up and come up because there are various kinds of fish. We are all fishermen. Let's respect ourselves. There are many people who have mastered the art of using their hook, who are about to throw away their hook looking for nets. Unfortunately, your mandate does not need a net. If you carry that net, you will find out you don't even have the strength to swing it. You may follow that net into the sea. And there are many people who have been given nets, but the controversy with holding a net and swinging it, they would rather just hold a hook, but you will only catch one fish per hook. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. I remember many years ago, 
there used to be this wonderful group. Um, it was a music group. And they went through a lot of stress because they were not believed. I knew the people were born again. I knew they loved Jesus with all their hearts. And I told them that time, I said, look, with the resources I had then, I will contribute gladly in helping you. Listen, let me tell you something about the body of Christ. We must be very careful. We are losing a lot of fish because we are destroying the efficiency of fishermen simply because their tools for catching fish is different from what we are using. We need to be careful. If on my way going, I find someone who is a professional. How many of you know that there are many fellowships that are around many, you know, careers like, um, say for instance, the Immigration Christian Fellowship. I preach there every year. So you have to be a uniform person to even have access to that kind of place. I have the honor of preaching there every year. I've preached there for like eight years or so, maybe eight or ten years. Every year, at least once, I go there. There are people who have been born again there. And the way God got them born again was to give them jobs with immigration so that they can attend that fellowship. There are many students, the only way they got saved was by getting admission because there are programs their parents will never allow them go. So you will find out that the child's jam score was not up to it, but God still gave the child admission because it was more than just getting a degree. God needed that child to be released from a hostile home, to be in an atmosphere where he can pray. That child will never be allowed to have a night vigil where he or she is coming from. That's how many of you got saved. The message is respect the diversity of ministries within the body provided they are genuinely born again and provided they love God. Don't make business people feel less of witnesses. Don't let drama actors, Christian drama ministries, feel less of actors. Don't allow worshippers, those called into the worship ministry. You may not like the way they jump, but don't be too quick to judge. Go and find out the investments they make in the secret before they come out to jump. Don't be too quick to judge. Just because they sing the way you don't want does not mean they are not singing to the glory of God. Are we together? Don't judge people called into campus ministry. Their ministry is to young people. They will wear t-shirts and jeans and be jumping. Don't, don't laugh at those who are called into the ministry of fitness and they are using it for the gospel. Their job is to tell their story from losing so, so, so pounds. Now I am weak and they preach Jesus. We must respect the fishing tools that every fisherman carries. Now the truth I must balance is that there are tools that are not tools. For instance, if we see you standing with a knife at sea, you are not a fisherman because holding that knife that way is not a tool. So I'm not just saying we should just celebrate any tool. No, the tools may be diverse, but when you see a fishing tool, you know because you can see the assignment of that tool and you can see the result from using that tool. Fishers of men. Are we learning? There are many ministries that should not have died. They died today out of guilt because there was no more space for them in the body of Christ. We have defined by our understanding about God what ministries are of God and what ministries are not of God. And in doing that, maybe sincerely so, we have closed down many great ministries and it ought not to be so. How many women ministries have died today because we are attempting to manage excesses? How many music ministries have died today because we are attempting to manage excesses? How many discipleship platforms have died today simply because we did not understand the nature of their call? When you see a ministry not working in alignment, you'll be learning. The key is not to destroy it. The key is to trust God for alignment. Is someone learning? If you're learning, say amen. amen. So number one.
you need to understand the sea the world are we learning number two you need to know the various kinds of fish we're still learning number three you need to understand the various techniques are we still together the various techniques that there are several ministries there are diversities of ministries across the body when you see the ministry of the man who was once a madman in Gadara don't be quick to judge it when you see the ministry of the woman who was once a prostitute who left her water pot to run and go and call other people and you see the woman who was once a prostitute saying come see a man don't be too quick to say it is not of God when you see the ministry of the woman breaking her alabaster box before Jesus don't be quick to see the wastage when you see the ministry of Joseph of Arimathea, his ministry was not to follow Jesus for evangelism. When you see him buying the gravesite, don't say it's a waste. That's where Jesus will be buried. Number four, fishers of men. The fourth training that every fisherman needs to go through, which represents the training of a soul winner. Are you ready now? You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. This is a very powerful one. You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. Luke chapter 5, please. Give us 4 and 4 to 6. If your boat is not strong, you can catch an amount of fish that would destroy the boat and end up destroying your life. Luke chapter 5 from verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, Jesus now, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Nets for a catch. Verse 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. Verse 6. And when they had this done, watch this, the Bible says they enclosed a great multitude of fish, but there was a problem now with that harvest, and their nets break. Their nets break. And I can imagine that the boat, that boat there that they now transferred everything to, the boat was even going down because of the size of the fish can i tell you there are many people who god will not give the anointing and the mantle to bring a certain kind of harvest because their boat their ministerial capacity cannot manage the kind of ingathering they will have with all due respect there are servants of god there are christian platforms god cannot give them one thousand souls in one day there is no boat that has been designed to keep that fish. Number one is that there is nowhere to even take those people who are saved. Are we together now? We are preparing for a sound of revival and we have invested so much building a prayer team, building counselors in anticipation of the kind of harvest we know and believe by faith that God is bringing. You cannot be holding a crusade, for instance, and then you train just 10 counselors or two counselors. Something is wrong with your boat. You see, let me tell you this. Every time you catch so much fish and your boat is too small, something happens. Both you and the boat and the fish will be lost. Do you have systems in place to follow up the sinners that are saved? Or is it one man of God who will do everything and you will die of stress within one month? Because the problem was not the harvest. It was that the boat was not efficient. Are we learning? Every fisherman knows that depending on the kind of fish you want to catch, you must ensure that the boat, the boat can mean the church. The boat can mean your follow-up strategy. The boat can mean the people you have raised to be able to make sure and ensure that the souls, the sinners that are saved are not lost. I learned this 
from Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory. He used to have a pamphlet, a book called Now That You Are Saved. The moment you are saved, so what happens, his strategy was because he didn't run a church-based ministry. He usually organized his crusades in collaboration with the local assemblies. So before the crusades, he would do what they call fire conference and he would train the pastors to make sure that they are efficient enough to receive the harvest. After the crusades, the people who are already in various churches are distributed back to their churches and those who do not have churches are redistributed across local assemblies to make sure that there is a follow-up system and the strategy worked. Are we together? The same has been used with many great evangelists. There's no point winning 20,000 people, 5,000 people, and as soon as the people confess Jesus, they go back and there is no system to help them. They go back to their lives and before you know it, you will never imagine they were once saved. Training number four, make sure your boat is efficient. There must be structures on ground, a strong follow-up system, an establishment system for the harvest that we desire. Your harvest will always be wasted when your boat is too small. Your harvest will always be wasted when you have no boat, in fact. According to scripture, no evangelist, you see, the pattern revealed in scripture, no evangelist should go and preach without a collaboration with local assemblies for the follow-up and the establishment of believers. So it is either you the man of God who is now the fisher of men already has a structure where the people can be incorporated in or you work in partnership with those who already have structures. That way for everyone who is saved you know that after one year, two years, you will still find the person in the fold. We have wasted a lot of fish after laboring to catch them because the boat had a problem. If you are learning, say amen. amen. You must have a functional boat that gathers your fish. You must have a strong follow-up structure. At least a pamphlet. I remember those days when we started our crusades, we used to have one sheet, you know, we'll just write out the plan of salvation and we'll hand it over. Just a sheet. Couldn't afford a pamphlet. And we'll just write a sheet that is given to unbelievers and have a system to follow them up. You've seen how we do it in Koinonia here. That when an altar call is made, they are led, there is a group of counselors trained and there is a system to begin to follow them up. Number five, if you are learning, say amen. amen. Fishers of men. Are you ready for the training number five? That every fisherman needs to know this and that also applies to every fisher of men, every soul winner. You cannot effectively fish in isolation. Write that down, please. You cannot effectively, every fisherman knows this. Every fisherman is trained along this line. And every fisher of men must know this. You cannot effectively fish in isolation. Respect and engage with other fishermen. You cannot effectively fish no matter how skilled you are, no matter how gifted you are, you cannot effectively fish in isolation. Respect and engage with other fishermen. Still Luke chapter 5. We read 4 to 6. Now let's read 6 and 7. Luke chapter 5, 6 and 7. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Shout verse 7 please as you see it projected. Ready? One to read. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. 
This is the implication of praying for a harvest. This is the implication of soul winning. Soul winning can sink your boat when you do it alone. It can sink your boat financially. The demands it takes to maintain the souls that are now saved. It is the reason why when we are organizing global conferences like this, we are not afraid to tell people, come join. Join in any way, financially, through your prayer, because no matter how great you are as a fisherman, the kind of harvest God wants to bring may sink your boat if it's only your boat. So one financial helper can help your boat stand. One prayer helper can help your boat stand. Are we together now? There are many people's boats that have sunk or are sinking now and they are genuine fishermen because of this ministry or this, this false approach to ministry of standing alone. No, even Jesus needed help. He had to carry the cross but he fell on the way and they called on someone to help him. Let me tell you the truth. As a soul winner, as a fisher of men, do not be afraid to join hands with fellow fishermen to produce greater efficiency. Right from the infancy of this ministry as we organize crusades, we would always open up doors to groups and other ministries who believe in what we stand for. It's always been a collaborative effort. You know why? Because in many cases, the weight of the harvest, spiritually so, there are people who are already praying now for sound of revival. There is a prayer team. You prayed for it today. And it continues up until that time. Because no matter how anointed I am, no matter how anointed we are, this is a body ministry. There are people today who are not even part of the Koinonia family, but have taken it as an intercessory project. They are the helpers. No matter how anointed you are, this ministry of soul winning is not for one person. You can be a professional fisherman. If the fish is too much in your boat, you will still sink. You will sink financially. You will sink in terms of your, your a stretching of yourself. With all due respect, when you read the Welsh Revival, I'm speaking to the globe, Evan Roberts, according to history, as much as we have read, one of the reasons why the man died young, he was one of the youngest of the generals recorded that died. And what killed him was not a demonic attack. What killed him was stress. Because the revival was breaking out. There were awakenings. I mean, fire was all over the place. He needed to be everywhere at the same time. And there were no helpers. His boat was sinking till he died. There are many pastors who have died today because they would not embrace to say, you know what, I can preach in a crusade ground, but I don't have the grace to follow up unbelievers. I don't have the patience to follow up hundred complicated people. But there is a pastor who was a pastor by ordination. He can follow up the most stubborn member. Why don't you lean on the, the advantage of their grace for efficiency? Training number five. You cannot effectively fish in isolation. Respect and engage with other fishermen. Jesus himself told us that the major problem with the harvest is not the harvest, it's the laborers. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37, he says, surely the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. That's the problem. There are few hands relative to the amount of souls to be saved. And you will think because there are so many preachers, so many churches, I'm saying this to you because if God has called you particularly, uniquely to the ministry of soul winning, don't say there are the Joshua Selmans, there are this and that. No, the harvest is wide. How many countries can you go to in a year? How many sermons can you preach? There are only 52 weeks, ladies and gentlemen, in a year. If you preach one sermon, 
one evangelical sermon per week. You only have 52 in a year. I was very touched when some gentleman began to, you know, find a way of translating our message, particularly to the Francophone nation. I've visited a few of their nations and I've seen the hunger. And sometimes I feel so sad because of this language barrier. But the hunger to learn, do you know that because of the hunger, some of them had to learn English so that they could understand these teachings. Very powerful communication of zeal. Being a fisher of man, of men, will require a lot of collaboration. A lot of collaboration. A lot of collaboration. Listen, many more hands I wrote here are needed for this work. Let us not discourage and destroy the hands already available. We are still looking for more hands. Let's not destroy the hands that are available. If the hands are weak, what they need is to be strengthened, not destroyed. Not destroyed. Not destroyed. What we need is not to destroy the hands that are available. What we need is to strengthen the hands that are available. An ineffective fisherman is still a fisherman. He just needs more training. He just needs more purifying. He just needs more mentorship. But by the time a large sea has only six or seven fishermen, when sharks begin to come out, that's when you will see that more hands are needed. Because sharks are in the sea too. Whales are in the sea too. Other dead sea creatures are in the sea too. The ones that science has not even seen are in the sea too. We need more hands. Let me tell you the truth. We need more hands. We need more hands on campus. Years ago, I used to do a lot of campus ministry. Now, I don't do so much of that again. The time and the luxury is not even there. But more hands are needed. Because for many people who genuinely started experiencing God, especially in our generation, for most of them, their defining season spiritually started on campus. If campuses are void of real witnesses, there will be a problem there because Satan has positioned men too there. How about secondary school ministries? We started FCS right from secondary school. Remember? There are many secondary schools now where you go there to preach, you will start crying. The children will ask you questions as an adult that you want to cry. You know why? Because they've left all of them. The corruption starts from the teachers themselves with all due respect. The kinds of things the teachers say as they teach behave as they teach is what begins to destroy the students right from secondary school. Primary school and elementary classes. There needs to be fishers of men positioned. There are some of you, God will give you a mandate to start a school, not just for money. You can make money through and any other business, but it will be a burden in your heart you will not be able to run away from. Do you know why? Because the fish that your net will be that school that will bring all kinds of people the next apostles the next prophets i think about my life today and i look at the various stages of my life and the corresponding encounters that have built me by grace to what i am now what if they were not there what if those fishers of men were not there what if they were ignored what if they were discouraged Pray in one minute, Lord, send laborers. Send laborers. Send laborers. Please pray in one minute. Lord, we still need more laborers. Laborers as preachers. Laborers as kingdom driven businessmen. Laborers as Christian groups serving the purposes of God. Laborers as apostles on fire. Laborers as prophets on fire. Laborers as teachers on fire. Go ahead and pray. Labor us as missionaries. Labor us as mission groups. The harvest is wide. We need more hands. We need more hands. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you something. I'm still on point five. As I studied this scripture, the Lord ministered something to me in Matthew chapter 4. 
21 and 22. Just because you are a fisherman and you are already fishing does not mean you will not continue training. I need to say this. Because there are many fishermen like there are many preachers. I must say this. There are many fishermen like there are many with all due respect churches and ministries. The problem is not the zeal. The problem is something is wrong with the fishing strategy. Let me show you something here. Matthew chapter 4, 21 and 22. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, having called Peter and Andrew. The Bible says he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John in a ship with Zebedee, their father. What were they doing? Please shout it. Mending their nets. What were they doing? One more time. He still called them too. Something was wrong with their nets. And they were not ashamed. They stopped fishing. They took a break from fishing to fix their nets. There are many fishers of men in the body of Christ that may need to take a break and mend their nets. Just because you are mending your net, your net can mean your character. Your net can mean something wrong. An approach, wrong mentorship you received in ministry. Now you have found the light. Stop fishing. Mend your net. Mend your net. The Bible says, even though he saw that something was wrong with your net, I like the last sentence. He still called them. There are many fishers of men today at their current state, their fishing will be ineffective because something is wrong with their net. The Bible says, and I like this, when it has to do with mending the nets, both the fathers and sons sat down to mend their nets. It is not only sons that mend their nets. The Bible says John, his brother was there and their own father Zebedee, they all sat down. Something is wrong with the way we have been doing church. Let's reorder our steps. Something is wrong with the way we have been doing ministry. It's not bringing efficiency to souls. Mend their nets. Are we learning now? But the beautiful statement there is that Jesus saw them mending their nets and he said, that's it. You have passed the test to be fishers of men indeed. Come. Hmm. Just because he called you does not mean he's released you to fish. Sometimes the reason why he's calling you is because he saw repentance. Because you are ready. He saw genuine repentance. He saw brokenness that you are willing to do ministry right. Mend your nets. This may be a message for someone. You are called, but mend your nets. You are called, but mend your nets. Mend your nets by mending character. Mend your nets by bringing out the dross all the impurities that don't allow you to do ministry well. Mend your nets by taking away hatred. Mend your nets by going for further ministerial training and learn the other aspects of ministry that makes for efficiency. Learn, mend your net by adding financial principles to how you are doing ministry. Mend your net by learning administrative principles so that your witness is efficient. Mend your net by inculcating prayer in your ministry. Learn, mend your net by incorporating the word of God. Whatever is missing can affect your net. Mend your net. This is not a message. Tell them. It's a message for the body of Christ. I like the fact that when it has to do with mending nets, whether you are a son or you are Zebedee, sit down. Mend your nets. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted till the nations see Jesus lifted up please hear this preacher there are many many nets that need to be mended the reason why we are not catching fish is not because we are not called he called us but there are many mendings that need to be done. Is someone learning now? Businessman, mend your net. 
worship minister. You are genuinely called, but this excess is connected to the worship ministry is tearing your net. Mend your net. Go for a retreat and mend your net. You are a great preacher, but this anger that comes together with your preaching, mend your net. You love Jesus, but you love money too. Mend your net. Someone say, mend your net. You are talking to yourself, or say, mend your net. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I read this scripture, listen, when I read this scripture, I took out time, I started praying for myself first. Listen, gone are the days where you allow pride and ego to destroy you. If you find your net tearing, even if you are Zebedee, sit down. If you are, I hope you know who James and John were. These guys were not ordinary people. James was a powerful apostle. Eventually he would become. John became the beloved. But for them to become the beloved and James the powerful, they had to sit down. I like the fact that the Bible did not say their father told them, go and mend your nets. I am a father. Fathers can mend their nets. Sons can mend their nets. Experience in ministry does not stop your net from tearing. In fact, the older you are, I suspect the net can tear. Mend your nets. When it has to do with mending nets, there is no pride over experience. I've been in ministry 10 years, 20 years, with all due respect. That is worthy of note, but mend your net. Because sometimes net tear just because of use. They don't tear because of carelessness. By the time you have been persecuted for 10 years, non-stop, maybe offense would have crept in. Mend your nets. By the time you have now become a millionaire or a billionaire, chances are excellent that the values that you kept when you started may be compromised because there's no need for money again. Mend your nets. Can we pray for the body of Christ in one minute before I continue? Lord, we pray. Go ahead and pray. We pray for apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers. Come on, pray now. We pray for businessmen. We pray for captains of kingdom-driven captains of industry. Lord, like Zebedee, like James, like John, we are in a season where God is mending nets. And this is everybody's call. Mend your nets. Apostle, mend your nets. You are called, but mend your nets. Prophets, mend your nets. Evangelists, mend your nets. Koinonia, mend your nets. Everyone can mend their nets. Check your nets. Mend your nets. Anger, character failure, inefficiency ministry. Mend your nets. You are called, but your, your witness, being a fisher of men will be ineffective until you mend your nets. In Jesus name we pray. Thanks for watching this video. I believe you are richly blessed by this video. Stay tuned for the next news. If you are yet subscribed to this channel, please don't forget to do so. Till next time you come away, stay blessed. Shalom.